This is Tom Fer The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, attendees. Uh, this is Tom Ferris from Alliance Communications. Uh, welcome to our presentation today. Uh, looks like we've got most of our attendees on board, so I think we're going to get going. Again, thanks for coming on board today. It's a lovely Friday here in New Jersey. The sun's out. Sandy is long gone, and uh, we're getting back to business here. Um, we're here today to present uh, Next Generation Communications Solutions for the Digital Oil and Gas Field. I'm very happy to, uh, to announce uh, that uh, our vendor partner, ABB, will be presenting today. Uh, ABB recently purchased a company by the name of Tropos Communications, uh, which is one of the leading manufacturers of mesh communication products in the world. Um, Bill Kiever, who is the director of uh, ABB's Tropos Oil and Gas Sales Division, will be presenting. Uh, he has two guests from ABB, Ron Paquette, who is the Vice President of Sales for ABB Wireless, and Willie Maher, who is the Director of Sales Engineer uh, sales engineering for ABB Wireless as well. So I'm happy to have these folks on board. So what we're going to do today, uh, we're going to start excuse me, um, with a little bit of an introduction to Alliance, and then we're going to talk about some of the uh, real-time solutions that we're going to be reviewing today under ABB's presentation. So just to give you a little bit of idea about Alliance Communications, we are a wireless distribution company located throughout the Americas. We have offices in Canada, United States, and Mexico. We, we focus on wireless. We are wireless experts. We add value to our customers and partners by providing um, a high level of wireless engineering skills and integration skills. We have integration partners around the world who can assist in projects. And we sell a full complement of products that also go along with the active RF components that we sell. The markets that we focus in here uh, throughout the Americas, uh, we, uh, one of our prime focuses is the cellular uh, service provider industry. We provide much support today for a lot of the 4G uh, upgrade programs that you're seeing, uh, seeing especially advertised on TV these days with all carriers upgrading to 4G. We actually act as the logistics partner for the contractors who put up uh, these 4G systems around the country. Um, we also sell through uh, resellers and integration partners who we rely on to, uh, to install the equipment properly for end users. And our market focuses are the ones listed here. We're going to focus on oil and gas and mining today. Uh, we just came off a very successful Oilcom show uh, on November 6th through 8th down in Houston, and I'm sure uh, I think a lot of the people who signed up today were attending that. Uh, a lot of buzz at the show, a lot of excitement. We had a lot of people coming to us with uh, a lot of issues that they were encountering in the field these days. And we feel that we have a nice complement of products to solve some of those issues. Um, just to get back to Alliance for just a couple more minutes, we have two divisions of our company. One is called the Wireless Infrastructure Solutions Division. And this division um, focuses primarily on uh, infrastructure products, wire and cable, AC-DC power equipment. And you'll see a variety of very well-known names in the industry, Comscope, Andrew, uh, Corning, Raycap, Belden, Panduit. Uh, so these are all sort of the uh, what we call the non-active components that are in the background supporting all of the active RF components. And then we have the Wireless Broadband Solutions Division. And this is the division that focuses primarily on the active RF components. These are products that are uh, used in backhaul and transport systems, uh, which would include uh, licensed and unlicensed microwave. And we also support point-to-point -point and point-to-multipoint licensed and unlicensed solutions, similar to Wi-Fi and WiMAX. Uh, and we also support ABB's product line, which is primarily focused on mesh networking. So if you notice, we have a large complement of manufacturers where we can offer pretty much a complete solution to most of the wireless communication uh, issues you might have in the field. These are some of the other services that we provide at Alliance. We do RF planning and path analysis. We can also do radio pre-configurations in our staging facilities. 
Uh, we actually coordinate frequencies through Industry Canada and uh, the FCC here in the United States. Uh, we provide installation assistance through a very large network of certified installers across the Americas. And we have local inventory, uh, hopefully where it's needed. Uh, we have several facilities here in the U.S. and Canada and a very large warehouse down in Mexico City. We also do staging and kitting of material in our uh, warehouse facilities. And uh, most important on very large scale projects where there's a lot of material required and a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of site kitting, we provide logistics and supply chain services, which is basically management of the flow in and out of the facilities uh, to make these products available to our larger accounts exactly when they need them. And these are just some of the, uh, some of the customers that we've served over the years uh, in the oil and gas sector. Um, so a lot of these are, uh, these are spread throughout Canada, the United States, Mexico, and Latin America. So we are truly kind of a pan-American company at Alliance. And with that said, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Bill Kiever, who's going to take us through the, uh, the, ABB, uh, the ABB wireless presentation. Thank you. Happy Friday, everyone. Uh, as Tom mentioned, uh, my name is Bill Kiever, and I'm the Director of Sales for ABB Wireless, and I am focused uh, exclusively on uh, oil and gas and uh, petro petrochemical applications. And uh, so what we're going to talk about today is really ABB's advantage, uh, advanced wireless solution for the digital oil and gas field. Uh, what we're seeing today in the industry uh, is uh, it's changing at a pretty rapid pace uh, with new applications coming on every day that require additional bandwidth and at ABB uh, we're going to talk I mean we're going to talk about the uh, product line um, that uh, will allow you to run multiple applications over one network in an affordable reliable and easily easy to deploy manner and what I'm going to tell you about today is uh, the many advantages of uh, ABB wireless solution we're going to talk about uh, specific products, uh, uh, kind of highlight a couple installations, and then close with some uh, Q&A. So with that, we will begin. Uh-oh. Technical problems already. Lisa, can you hear me? Yes, Lisa? I can hear you. Yeah. Just press enter. I, I know. It's not... No? Well, put your arrow key on the presentation and, and click on the presentation. Uh, there we go. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. So ABB Wireless is the uh, leader in outdoor applications, and we have over 1,000 customers installed. Uh, we have 50 patents for our technology with another 45 patents pending. In the last year, we've seen uh, significant success in oil and gas applications, uh, and this is the result of advances, of course, in reliability, maintainability, and cost. Uh, what it's doing is it's allowing uh, oil and gas companies to really take full advantage of a robust, robust, robust network like this. Uh, you know, with a thousand customers uh, globally, uh, 100,000 routers installed. Uh, you know, we're positioned well for for the future. In summary, bandwidth requirements in the oil field today, uh, they're, getting, uh, they're getting larger. They're not getting smaller. So what are some of the challenges that uh, oil and gas companies are seeing today? Uh, in the past, uh, many companies were hesitant to deploy broadband networks, and it was due to several factors, uh, immature technology, some security concerns, clashing frequencies, However, today with the advances in reliability and affordability, um, or at least concerns are really a thing of the past. I, was, uh, I had a conference call uh, late last night uh, with uh, Peto uh, out, of, uh, out of Alberta, and uh, they, uh, he, was, he was in a remote location without, uh, historically without any uh, uh, internet access or phone service, uh, and uh, he... Uh, when we when we spoke, he was going over the uh, Atropos wireless mesh network. Uh, he was communicating with me over the network, and he just said it's the first time that he can ever remember having access uh, connectivity out there, and it was just it was a life changing experience for him. So, of course, we're always excited to hear that, and um, and we have many customers that will will articulate that same uh, value proposition. Uh, you know, 900 megahertz technology has been around for a long time, decades, and uh, 
and when I discuss uh, clashing uh, frequencies or noise, uh, anybody who's using 900 megahertz today understands what I'm talking about. So, the, the, and you know, the reality is when you start looking at uh, the development in the oil field and, and, and um, you start to see that this problem is really only going to get worse, it's not getting better. Uh, with ABB, uh, we're going to show you how to avoid many of these problems. So the digital oil and gas field, the solution. So what does ABB Wireless do for you? It allows you to take advantage uh, in advancements in, in several areas today, uh, process monitoring, uh, productivity enhancement, being able to walk around with a uh, tablet or a laptop, uh, safety and security applications, integrated communications, things like voice, video, and data, end-to-end uh, -end controls, everything from the wellhead and beyond. Uh, whether it's upstream, midstream, downstream, we have uh, solutions for all of them. And, and this is all over one network, and it's an easy-to-manage network. And we'll get more into that, how easy this network is to manage. Can everybody, Lisa, can you still see this fine? Yes, yeah, sorry, I was muted. I can, everything's going great. Great, okay. So why ABB? Well, with the emergence of standards-based applications, uh, it's really changed the perception of wireless technology in the field. Uh, ABB is 100% standards-based and interoperable with uh, uh, other standards-based technology. And so what I'm, what I'm saying there is things that you've deployed, they're standards-based. Uh, you know, we embrace legacy, uh, legacy uh, technology. We, we don't, we're not asking you to abandon that, uh, so we embrace that, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but, but it's, it's completely standards-based, and it, it will work with anything else that's standards-based that you already have in place. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, this solution allows extreme high performance. It's carrier grade. It's five nines worth of reliability. Uh, it's uh, scalable. Uh, with, uh, though we're five, we have networks that have 5,000 routers installed, and we have networks with as few as three. Uh, it works with technology already deployed, as I mentioned, and the best of all, it's, it's, an easy, it's an easy solution to manage. Oil and gas communications network, what ABB provides. So uh, we, are, we are, of course, the leader in uh, uh, outdoor wide area performance. No one else comes close to what we can do in the outdoors. Uh, we don't, like I said, we don't abandon, abandon legacy technology because we support uh, serial protocols. So if you have an existing uh, 900 megahertz uh, network in place that's uh, serial, and you need uh, a broadband network to interface with that, we've got we've got a solution for that. Uh, we are top. We're de designed for extreme conditions. We have uh, we have. Uh, uh, our routers deployed in uh, some of the hottest places on Earth and some of the coldest places on Earth. Um, and we're enterprise level of security, and there's a we're going to get into this in more detail. But I will tell you that corporate IT people love us. Um, we are uh, our level of security is is unmatched. There's not a there's not another device in the field that has the same level of security that we do. We're designed for hazardous environments. We're Class One Div Two. And, and most importantly, we're easy to deploy. Uh, we, we deployed just recently a, a network in the Roosevelt field. Uh, I think we're going to talk about that a little later in the presentation. Uh, and that network uh, went up in less than a week and a half. So, so, so regardless of the application, uh, whether it's today or in the future, uh, this network has you covered. It essentially future-proofs your investment uh, in technology uh, today and in the future. This slide illustrates uh, some of the multiple applications that can function on this uh, same network. So again, this is one network. Often you see in the oil and gas environment that uh, companies are running multiple networks for multiple applications. Uh, this, this, this network, this technology will allow you to run net one network and will run, allow you to run multiple applications on that same network. You know, most managers that I've talked to, they become uh, believers when they realize how much time and money can be saved by making informed repair, repair and replace operational decisions. Um, 
as opposed to just sending somebody out there. Um, when you have video and, and you can see what's going on at that location, uh, when you have uh, uh, you know voice over IP, so you can you can talk back. You have uh, internet access, so you can send emails and download files. It, it, it makes a world of difference. So where does Tropost uh, fit in uh, in the network? Um, so we're that tier two. We call it the field area network. Uh, in this slide, you can see that uh, where we reside. Um, we take capacity from the core network and essentially make it usable to the field. Again, on the tier three, you can see all the various applications, and that's just a few of the applications. There's there's many many more, and we can we can talk specifically about uh, your unique requirements, you know, offline. But uh, this is just kind of highlighting just a few of some of the more common applications that we see today. So how does this work? So this, this, uh, this slide uh, illustrates uh, a traditional mesh network. Uh, it'll serve each each of those uh, hexagons uh, serve as a router for messaging from uh, other devices. So in other words, a device doesn't necessarily need to communicate directly with a gateway. Those gateways are the hexagons fed by uh, the red lines. Um, the benefit to this is that it really extends the range of the network and provides redundant communications communication routes to increase reliability. So for example, so for example, if uh, for the if you look at the the uh, gosh, for lack of better words, the pink the pink shaded area, uh, that hexagon that's fed by the red line in that pink shaded area, if that uh, if that connection were to go down, say hypothetically, uh, there was a catastrophe at that uh, location and cut that fiber connection, uh, that would uh, then fall over to become a node and then mesh with the other blue and green uh, uh, parts of the network as well. So what that means to you is it's not only reliable, but essentially fail-proof. Uh, I, I don't know that I've ever seen a network go down. Um, you might have a node go down, you might have a location go down for whatever reason, maybe a lightning strike or something, but I've never seen an entire network go down. We, we mentioned security. Um, we mentioned security a few minutes ago. And uh, so I want to spend a few minutes on this. Um, I, I said that corporate IT people love us, and and uh, and I'm going to explain why that is. So we we, we use end-to-end -end secure IPsec VP tunneling. Um, our, our technology is 802.11. It means it, it essentially works with everything that you've already deployed in the past. It's IP addressable. So what it does is it pushes firewalls out to the edge. So uh, corporate IT organizations can push their uh, their policies out to the field where historically with with the 900 megahertz solution you can't really do that uh, it detects and it avoids interference from unwanted signal propagation uh, anybody who has 900 uh, technology deployed today you fully understand what that means right and uh, uh, network access control it reinforces corporate IT policies all the way to the edge so uh, because these things are routers, they're IP addressable, they have firewalls on them, um, it's, it's by far the most secure network you can deploy in the field today. Secure mobility, we have, uh, we'll get into this in a little bit, but we have uh, uh, mobile routers that, that are mounted in trucks uh, that are usable going down the road at you know, high speeds and, and uh, it, it maintains the highest level of security for a mobile environment. And, uh, and last but not least, uh, identified uh, uh, based uh, networking, and that allows for, uh, uh, if, let's say you have contractors that are working on your location that need access to the network, but you don't feel comfortable giving them access to your entire network, we have the ability to uh, set aside a part of the network specifically for them, uh, and we can control who has access to it and who doesn't. Well, you can. And, uh, um, we uh, we we developed that for uh, several oil and gas companies, and, uh, uh, most recently for EOG uh, Resources in um, the uh, Eagleford. They had a lot of contractors out on their location, and they wanted the ability to 
provide them access, but really not give them access to their uh, corporate corporate network. And uh, they wanted them to have internet access and 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 things like that. But but that was it. And so we were able to develop and, and provide this for them. And well, and if you have any uh, security questions or any questions uh, related to this, at the end of this presentation, we'll uh, we will we'll get into that. This this uh, this slide illustrates how multiple applications can run over the same network. Uh, so we cover broadband distribution in areas challenging environments, right? And and uh, so there are multiple applications that that uh, that run over the same network. Whether it's video, we're starting to see lots and lots of video being deployed in the oil field. Um, in, in most environments, cellular coverage isn't very usable, and if it is, it's expensive. Uh, so uh, safety and, and security concerns, mobile workforce. Uh, we have lots and lots of oil and gas companies that deploy uh, our mobile router in their trucks. So wherever the trucks go, it's a node on the network, and they're all they're, they're they have high bandwidth. They can they can download files, they can upload files, they can they can talk on their uh, uh, you know voice phone, VoIP phones. Uh, and then, then, of course, all your measurement uh, readings, the SCADA uh, flow meters, things like that, it, it's all over the same network. So the, the product line. So Lisa, can you hear me OK? Yes, you're all good. Okay. I can't hear anything, so it kind of freaks me out when I can't hear anything. I feel like I'm talking to myself sometimes. You are. <laughs> uh, so uh, this, is, this is kind of an overview of the product line, and it, 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 it shows uh, photographs of some of the products. Uh, on the top uh, left, it's a 7320. That's, uh, that's a big gateway router uh, with battery back backup built into it. Below that is a, a 1410. It's a it's a class one div two device. It goes on the uh, the wellhead, uh, or or any environment that, that requires uh, any hazardous environment. But the device below that is a, a 43 4310. It's a mobile router. It's designed to be mounted in trucks. Uh, we're working with a a, a large uh, oil and gas company today. Uh, on uh, their frack trucks, right? They have hundreds and hundreds of frack trucks that need to be able to communicate uh, back to uh, back to another vehicle, and and uh, they're they're uh, going to deploy the 4310 for for that environment. This this thing's been tested. It's it's vibration sound. Uh, it's uh, environmentally sound. Uh, it's, it meets all the environmental requirements uh, that that we've seen out there. Uh, and then of course uh, point to point radios or point to multi point radios. Uh, we have solutions for those. Often we have mesh networks that are tied to each other via a point-to-point -point or a point-to-multipoint. And then uh, most importantly, the Tropos control. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, but it's, it allows you to easily manage uh, your network uh, and, and detect problems. And like I said, we'll get into that in more, more detail but in, in, a, in a second. But it's uh, it's really one of the advantages of having uh, this technology deployed in in your environment today. And because uh, all of our routers aren't uh, aren't deployed in uh, San Diego, so we've we've had to make them uh, tough for extreme conditions, right? So you can you can see that we're five nines re reliability, we're minus forty C. We operate to fifty five plus C. Uh, we have optional battery backup. Um, we we were 165 mile an hour wind survivability, but uh, because we're building a, a wireless network over the island of Guam, uh, we've been forced to increase that to 200 miles an hour. We've done the testing, we've passed. We've got lightning surge protection. Uh, not that it's a big deal in the oil and gas field, but salt fog rust resistant. It is a big deal in Guam, so so we have we have that. We talked about security. Uh, we have a lot of U.S. government deployments, so uh, clearly it's secure. It's FIPS 140-2. We talked about monitor uh, manageability. It's easy to monitor, easy to configure, upgrades. 
uh, you can push uh, upgrades down to all the all the nodes using Trellpost control, and uh, it's you know multiple applications. It's high bandwidth. It's low latency. It's it's uh, it's multiple ba multiple uh, applications that require ha high bandwidth. So whether it's video, when uh, we sold uh, Newfield in uh, Utah, uh, they 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 were apprehensive, uh, to say the least, about uh, wireless uh, technology and, and, and didn't truly believe that they would get the same uh, bandwidth that they, that they thought they, that we were telling them that they would get. Uh, we, we installed a, a pilot uh, location for them. We put a gateway up. We drove uh, four miles away, uh, and we uh, opened up a tablet, downloaded Netflix, and we watched a movie without uh, any buffering. Uh, high definition, and uh, they were believers. So, Trail Post Mesh Routers built for outdoor. We talked about this again. It uh, supports 802.11 A, B, G, and N, uh, uh, and we'll we'll talk about uh, uh, the ceramic filters and how it eliminates near band signaling from other devices and other radios. You know, we I mentioned that um, that we don't have the same problem with noise and frequency 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 clash that uh, other technologies have out there, and because we have uh, not only in our software but in in our hardware, we have the ability to to mitigate that, and it, we our customers have found that's a uh, that's a, a real benefit to them. Uh, up in Canada, in Alberta, for example. I mean, 900 megahertz uh, technology is getting to the point that it's almost unusable because there's so much of it, uh, and and the customers that we have up there, I mean, they're they're just they're over the moon with what they can do that they didn't realize they could do until they deployed this network. Again, we're ruggedized, we're weather weatherized. We we are, I think, we're in some of the most extreme conditions in the world. So. We talked about uh, our point-to-point -point solutions. Uh, uh, we, you know, we use them often to connect with other mesh networks. Uh, they're all integrated to our management platform. Extremely secure. You're able to do application segregation using VLANs and QoS policies. So you're able still to run multiple applications over these over these networks. Um, this slide here it illustrates what kind of a normal deployment might look like. So if you look down uh, with the, the red lines, those those are 14 tens, and they are on uh, tanks and, and flow meters and any measurement device that you might have out there that that needs to send data back up to a collection point. And then of course the uh, the black lines are tied to what we call a 6320. It could be a 7320, but in, for this for this uh, illustration, it's a 6320. And it's providing Wi-Fi and, and voice over IP and internet access for the field, but but those red those red net lines connect back to the 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 core network and then back to the corporate network. Uh, so you can see there's one, two, three well sites all operating on the same uh, same network in a redundant fashion, both at 5.8 and 2.4. So our technology operates at 2.4 and 5.8. Uh, and it's able to sense uh, interference. For example, if if um, those two two of those uh, nodes connected with the black lines, if if they're functioning at 5.8, if there's interference for any reason between that, they'll immediately uh, route to 2.4, and so it'll mitigate uh, again frequency clash and any noise that you're seeing out there. It's you just you're not going to have that problem with this network. As I mentioned, this is Tropos Control. Uh, it's our management platform. This is critical. Uh, it was designed specifically to manage wireless networks. It is a carrier-grade uh, management tool. We have a we have a deployment in uh, in uh, uh, California, uh, Mountain View, California. Uh, Google Networks asked us to build a, a wireless mesh network out there. We have 10,000 unique subscribers that, that join that network every single day. Uh, and they manage that network with one person part-time using Trepos control. 
as I've discussed, we're uh, we uh, we use Tropos Control to manage networks as large as 5,000 routers. Um, it's this this tool is extremely intuitive. It's easy. It identifies problems very easily. Uh, it allows you to track and manage uh, corporate assets, things like trucks. So if you have a truck with a mobile router on it, I mean, and and you will see that that mobile router as a node on that network, and as it moves, you'll be able to follow it. I, I mentioned that uh, we were going to talk a little bit about uh, some uh, existing customers or some applications. We could do this all day long, but I know it's a Friday uh, afternoon for many of you, and and I'm sure that you'd rather be doing something other than um, talking about my mini installations. But I did want to highlight a couple of them because I've made reference to them earlier in the presentation. EOG networks, uh, resources. Uh, we started with EOG and Corpus Christi. Uh, and then uh, EOG and the Eagle Third wanted us to, uh, they wanted to evaluate our technology. Um, they had deployed another technology uh, previously and they were frustrated with it. And really, I don't think that they believed they could achieve what they wanted to with a wireless solution. So we started small. We started with just a few well sites. Um, and we dramatically lowered their cost at those well sites, and we increased their performance by fivefold over what they were using before. And they, they never believed that that was possible. So, so now we're uh, we've replaced all their existing old technology, and now we're in the process of replacing their um, uh, uh, 900 megahertz technology that they were using to read SCADA data and flow meters and, and things like that. Uh, so it's becoming completely an ABB wireless shop. We're, we're taking all the other technology out of, the, out of their network. And we are expanding now into the Balkan with the EOG, and we're talking to them in Canada. And so, so that customer is, has become a believer. Uh, they use they're more and more every month is being deployed throughout their, throughout their uh, production locations. Uh, and the corporate IT people, of course, it's broadband, so it's natural that corporate IT people would initially be concerned uh, because you're you're allowing uh, people out in the field to have an enormous amount of uh, uh, bandwidth. Uh, and then we went down and we met with their corporate IT folks. We showed that we showed them our uh, security uh, capabilities, the fact that we could put firewalls on the end of each uh, device, the fact that they could push their corporate uh, policies out into the field. They've never been able to do that before, and they've never seen a technology that allowed them to do that before. And once we sat down with them for about 45 minutes, uh, we became the de facto standard of wireless communications within the EOG. I mentioned Newfield, uh, Newfield uh, a while back. I think I've talked about Newfield and Peto, and we'll talk a little bit about Peto, although I don't have a slide for Peto. Uh, Newfield, again, uh, they're in the Roosevelt field in Utah. Um, again, not a believer in, in wireless uh, communications. They were using uh, uh, some uh, off-the-shelf uh, 900 megahertz stuff for reading, reading devices. They weren't happy with it. There was a lot of noise, a lot of frequency clashing, uh, very unhappy. Uh, we've, and the, and all, their, all their guys out in the field carried air cards, right? So what we did is we, we, we built this network for them. We deployed it. That's a picture of uh, one of our 6320s on a tower. We built this network and deployed it for them in a very short period of time. Um, they're able to run multiple applications over it. Initially, the, initially the application was, was, was local Wi-Fi. And that's, that's fine. It was an anchor, anchor application for us. We built a Wi-Fi network for us. They were able to download, uh, have access to the Internet, maybe a little VoIP. Uh, but they, they quickly, quickly the, SCADA, the SCADA manager, uh, a guy named Derek Skanson, said, you know, I wouldn't mind taking advantage of this network uh, and, and running my SCADA data over it and all the measurement devices over it. <clears throat> so we, we, uh, but he wanted to pilot it. We put some 1410s out there. They piloted it, and, then, and now they're getting, a, getting away with all their traditional 900 megahertz technology because it works so much better, so much more dependable, uh, and it's so easy to deploy. They, uh, I did want to mention that uh, they, uh, uh, Chris, uh, the network engineer for Newfield, contacted me uh, when I put this slide together, and he said that because of the elimination of air cards and some of the efficiencies they've gained, 
they were able to ROI, pay for this network in, in four and a half months. The next slide shows a, a traditional um, uh, location. I believe this is a, a Neo G location. Um, it's, as you can see, uh, this, this, this facility is being operated on solar. We have a lot of facilities that are being operated on solar. These devices draw very little wattage. Uh, I think a 1410, I think, averages about 25, 27 watts, uh, depending on how much it's being used. Uh, which is comparable with the uh, most 900 solutions out there today. Five nines worth of reliability. Again, I want to emphasize this network does not ever go down. This is a carrier class network. This is a hardened network that is made for extreme conditions that uh, has uh, built in uh, uh, built in ways of, of routing around problems and, and mitigating uh, noise and it just doesn't go down. It is, once you install it, it's, it's in, it's in for, for a very long time. These radios have a mean time of failure that exceeds 15 years. So, so most of the stuff that you'll deploy, you, you'll be tired of using it before it's not usable. And that's really all I have. I did want to mention Payto because uh, uh, Alliance is a Canadian company and, and uh, 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 they are a new customer of ours and, and we're extremely excited about having a presence in, in uh, uh, Alberta. That's uh, a, a strategic opportunity for us uh, in 2013 and, and, um, uh, and I encourage you to, to talk to any of the customers and if you want references, uh, we're happy to do it. If you uh, would like to see the technology working in in a uh, an operational environment, I'm happy to uh, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, it's uh, our, our 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 customer base is an open book. We'll let you talk to them and ask them any questions you want to you want to ask them. But but Peto uh, specifically in Canada, uh, in, in speaking with him last night, it just it 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 really just it it made me so proud to uh, represent a, a company and a technology that's really really making a paradigm change uh, for the better in, in the oil and gas environment. Uh, and people are able to do things that they never thought possible historically. And, and, uh, and I, I think if you give this uh, technology an opportunity to at least trial it, you would find the same thing. And that's all I have. We'll open it up for questions. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to unmute uh, Ron and Willie uh, as well and, and uh, let them uh, help me answer some questions. If it's a technical question, will we be able to uh, address that? Lisa, can you open the line? Lisa? Hello? I think the lines, I think the lines, are, lines are open. If you can read the questions, we'll we'll just go through the questions. Okay. Uh, here we go. I, I uh, sorry, I'm unmuted. Uh, I, I was muted. Um, I just wanted to tell you that there are no questions at the moment submitted through the panel. But if people do have them, oh, sorry. Um, uh, if you do have a question, submit it through the questions uh, panel, and we can address them right now. No question is uh, too silly to ask. But there are some questions that we um, received from people who, uh, when they were registering for the webinar, so I think maybe we could address some of those. Um, one I'm seeing right here is, um, what is the role that fiber plays in the communications network? Um, how do you address hybrid wireless fiber solutions working with utility infrastructure? And a second part of it is um, um, combining fiber backbone with wireless extensions, leveraging utility infrastructure in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Western Virginia, et cetera, shale fields areas. Well, I, I will say, and, and I'm quoting my boss, Ron, who's, who's on this call all the time, and, and that is fiber's our friend. Uh, we love fiber. Uh, clearly, uh, what we do is, is we take we take uh, capacity from a core network, uh, whether it's a fiber connection or a VSAT connection or a point-to-point -point connection, and, and we we essentially make that capacity usable in the field, right? So um, uh, the gateways operate with a fiber connection or a point-to-point -point connection, and and uh, we we love fiber. Fiber, more fiber, I think, the better better the network is. 
Ron, do you want to expand on that? Yeah, to, to inject capacity into the mesh, that's the tier one layer of the mesh. And so we will take fiber or we'll take point-to-point -point technology. You also saw lines carried products like Redline. So we'll use Redline or we will use fiber to inject capacity into the mesh. And then that mesh is distributed into a cloud over the field or into a cloud over the utility of which then devices connect to that cloud. Lisa, you have another question? Yeah, sir, I just submitted one to you right to you know, I, I, I apologize, but I can't see it. Can you read it? Oh, sure. <laughs> Just one second. When could that be? Oh, sorry. This is a, a more of a private question. Um, someone did ask a question during the present uh, during the registration about remote access for crew welfare. Just, I guess that's one thing that they're interested in having remote internet access. Remote yeah. Access. Yeah. So, uh, and I, I touched on that a little bit, but let me, I'll, I'll dive into that a little bit more. So we have the ability to, to uh, set classifications, if you will, for access. So if, if you want, uh, if at, at a well location, if you want your contractors to have some one level of app, uh, access and you want your employees to have another level of access and then you want uh, your management uh, at the well location to uh, like a company person to have uh, another level of access, we're able to do that. So, um, so yeah, it's 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 easily done, um, and it's it's not uncommon. We we see that quite a bit. I mean, yeah, I, I think simpler than that is that's what the crews and field workers are are starving for. It's internet access. It's communications all over the field even though in the past they may have some cellular coverage, they don't have cellular coverage everywhere they need it. And so having internet access and cellular coverage anywhere you need it, that's really bringing out the value of the network, of, of putting in a mesh. Because obviously you can't communicate or get internet access over 900 megahertz. And so we, we bring that capability to the field. Right. And and I, w I would add that, that uh, with, uh, with our, our 4300 line of products uh, for mobility, whether uh, uh, you know whether it's in a frack truck or a, or a pickup truck, for that matter. Uh, I mean, it's 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 broadband connectivity wherever they go. I mean, uh, they they can get out of their truck with a that's a node on the network. I mean, that's a that's it's a, a Wi-Fi access point, if you will. They can they can get out of that truck. They can walk around. They can walk you know 100 yards away from that truck with a tablet and still still have broadband connectivity whether it's uh, and, and this is this is a tremendous uh, safety uh, tremendous safety uh, uh, benefit so uh, you know in, in Alberta right there's problems with uh, sour gas and, and if somebody goes uh, if, if somebody uh, isn't reachable I mean that's obviously a concern uh, you've got you know you've got connectivity wherever they are and, and whether it's you know Putting uh, cameras on trucks, or whether it's uh, you know their ability to take a tablet and read a, read an instrument and then immediately send that stuff back to the corporate network, uh, or whether they're out in the middle of you know a remote location and they're able to use a uh, 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 a VoIP or an IP app on their uh, on their iPhone, for example, to to connect back. Um, my my conversation with uh, with uh, Sheldon at Pato yesterday. Was completely over uh, voice over IP, and it sounded just as good as this call does right now. So, um, huge, huge safety uh, uh, benefit to companies out in remote areas. Okay, I've got a few more questions here. Um, <clears throat> the first one is: Does the mesh manage the radio power, and what is the maximum power of the radios? So, the maximum power of the radios is um, thirty-six. EIRP, it's, it's 4 watts, so it's a 1 watt radio and 7.4 dBi gain antennas, and that's the maximum output allowed by the FCC. But the most critical point is you saw in the presentation how we, when we up the power, it's also a very clean transmission of the signal with all the filters and ceramics that we put into it. And so it is uh, the most allowed by the FCC, both for North America and uh, for Canada. 
but yet if those radios are close together, we won't need all the power of four watts. And so we automatically adjust through software the ability to lower the power of each radio so we don't keep, so there isn't as much noise in the field. So we have a lot of interference mitigation, and part of that is through the hardware and how we uh, let you use the most power or let you use less if you need less power. Okay, thanks, Ron. Uh, there's another question. Is line of sight to a tower always required? Uh, no, no. Uh, clearly, line of sight is desired, but it's not required. Um, and it's, uh, you know, the we, we I, I talked a little bit about affordability. These these devices are extremely affordable, and and some so sometimes uh, to to enhance the network, uh, we'll we'll put a gosh, for lack of better words, uh, like a user node in the middle. But uh, but no, it, not necessarily. Uh, we. We're in the process of deploying a field out in uh, East Texas, and uh, they they unfortunately have some really really tall, tall pine trees, right? But we're able to we're able to work around it. I mean, again, um, well, the Roosevelt field it clearly is not a it's not it's not like the Permian Basin, right? Permian Basin is extremely flat. The highest point on the Permian Basin is a groundhog, right? But uh, but in the Roosevelt field, that's not the case, and in Alberta, that's not the case, and in the Balkan, that's not the case. So. So we have networks deployed in those locations, and, and we function we function just fine. Okay, thanks. Um, there's another question. What is the maximum distance you can reach from SCADA point to the AP? You wow. To um, you know, that, that's going to depend on some variables. Um, you know, we... I, 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 that's, that's, that's going to be a These are question. omnidirectional antennas, and... We've seen, depending on uh, situations, we've seen connections up to 8 to 10 miles away. Uh, typical connections uh, within a cloud, within the base infrastructure we put out there, maybe 3, 4, 5 miles away. So certainly we have the distance to go long, uh, 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 long distances, and we have the, in, uh, the ability to enhance that if we move from omnidirectional antennas uh, to directional antennas. Right. So, I mean, even using an omni, uh, even using an omni uh, directional antenna uh, at, at Roosevelt, we were we were closing we were closing um, uh, lengths at, at 12 miles. But uh, again, back to what Ron just said, I, I don't think I would ever recommend that. I, I think if you kind of manage, uh, you know, four, five, six miles, I think that uh, then that's that's always best. But but it depends on a lot of variables. But yeah, we can go further than that. And if it's just SCADA data, it's you know it's just a few kilobits worth of uh, information. You can probably go a little further. So. Okay. Uh, thanks. Great. Um, <clears throat> there's one more question right now. Right now, this is the last question, unless anyone has some more. Um, the question is: You mentioned running multiple application support for things like VoIP, SCADA, surveillance, etc., via VLAN. Do your products have any digital I/O support? And how do you handle networking of legacy serial-based equipment, or does everything have to be Ethernet-based? Well, well, no. I mean, I mentioned in the the uh, presentation, or if I didn't, I meant to, uh, that we support uh, uh, serial protocols, right? So our devices, uh, you can connect with them with the Ethernet, or you can connect to them via serial port. Uh, so yeah, so uh, at, at uh, ABB Wireless, I mean, we clearly have embraced the need for. Uh, of being able to support and uh, work with the legacy technology that's out in the field today, right? So we 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 understand that there's a lot of it out there, uh, and uh, and we are probably the most suited uh, advanced uh, technology in the marketplace that that embraces the legacy stuff and, and works with it. Um, then the IO support, Willie or Ron, you want to answer that? I think on the I/O support, the I/O support, um, you know, a lot of devices do have Ethernet built in, and you know, the 1410 uh, router, as Bill mentioned, there has a serial either RS-232, RS-485, and it supports, you know, a, a certain set of protocols. Like so, we do support DMP3 today, but let's say, for example, you have you have some devices out in the field that that speak a different language, um, and uh, you know, we, we can just have a uh, you know, some type of, of converter that interfaces between that SCADA device and the and the Tropos router. 
Um, but yeah, we but we interface with these type of I/O devices all the time. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So I think then we don't have any more questions. So I'm going to turn things over to Tom. Well, I, I just at uh, least I wanted to add. I wanted to add that. Um, um, can, is it is it how, how do how do the folks if they want to get in touch with us how do they how do they go about doing that are they going to go through Tom and or how do we want to be able to communicate with anybody if they have a question that's this maybe that they're not comfortable asking uh, in front of everybody else absolutely uh, after the webinar I'm going to be sending out a follow up email and it'll include uh, contact information and I'll be including a link where you can download a copy of the presentation. So if anyone has any questions, don't hesitate to even just simply reply to my email, and I can forward it to the right person. Again, folks, we, we, we fully appreciate that it's a Friday and, and that uh, everybody's busy, uh, and, and we very much appreciate the fact that you spent uh, part of your Friday with us, and, uh, uh, and, and we're excited about this solution, and we uh, will look forward to trialing it uh, at maybe one of your locations and, and, and showing you just the benefits that you would see by deploying something like this. You will, it will change your life for the better. Thank you, Bill. Uh, this is Tom Ferris again from Alliance. I want to thank everybody for coming on board today. Uh, it was, I hope it was an educational experience for everybody. As Lisa said, we're going to do a follow-up after this session today. Uh, one of the things on the follow-up that I would like to throw out to the audience is We'd like to follow this up with some future sessions, and those sessions could be as specific as you want them to be. So we'd like to get some feedback as to some real applications that you might want us to delve into, and maybe we can even bring an existing customer on board to, uh, to share some experiences about some of the things that, uh, some of the problems they may have solved that you might be having in the field today. So again, um, we've, uh, we appreciate you coming on. You're on our mailing list now. You will get some follow-ups on this, and we will see if we can put together additional series of sessions that uh, particularly address your concerns. Again, thanks for coming on board. Alliance and ABB appreciates your attendance, and we look forward to speaking with you all and hopefully solving your technolo technology solutions in the future. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks.